Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. It's 1459. Now we don't know what it is. Yeah. But you need to jump over to 90 when you get out here yeah. toward Brookshire. Exit Brookshire, turn north, get to 90, turn west. Does that sound right, Bill? Yeah. He Thank didn't you. even hear what you said. He just said yes. Right. He knows I said it, so it's right. I know. Is that how you got here, Bill? Why don't you Why don't you come sit down over here? Because uh, join us. Don wants to torment you on the air. Well, I, I've been tormenting Bill since 1977. So he, I know that you did. But you did you? Uh, you need to put that headset on so the world can hear you. There you go. Oh man, I feel like I'm wired now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. Need more let's coffee. not let, let's not get into that. No, we're going to leave that alone. Yeah, because we we used to have some of the same friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I hesitate. And I have to tell you that I have been trying since the last time I saw you, trying to remember that car club member's name that had I think it was a a green '69. I think it has a, it was a 427 with side pipes, and that is where I actually. Uh, that was my first car show. You were there. Uh, no, it so. wasn't. It, it was because I was in the car club by then. So, and he was, we were all showing our cars together at the Corvette Expo mm-hmm. at the Albert Thomas Convention Center. What a nightmare that was. The real Corvette Expo. The real one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because there are some. Not the one that goes on today? No, no. So. no. Have you ever so. been to that one down there? Once or twice, yeah. unfortunately. Ooh, yeah. yeah that's... Never going back. Mm. No. It's changed. I th- everything changes over time. Well, it does. But that, I, I went one time, and we, actually we did a broadcast from there. And we're talking about the one in Galveston, and not to put anybody down or no, put it down. No, it's a good show. It, for what it is, it's it's an okay show. There aren't a whole lot of cars, a lot of vendors, and um, I think it's more about the trip getting there and uh, the vendors than it is anything else. And Hot. if you're down there, it's fine. Hot Wheels, Beanie Babies, all kind of stuff, and some cars. <laughs> burnt beanie babies Be- is it? not burnt I didn't t- did you say <laughs> no i just stuttered a little <laughs> is that what it was move that microphone a little bit closer to your mouth if you don't mind thank you How's it? do i sound better that, they're much better much deeper now <laughs> well, I'm- what are you looking at david david i think uh, mr mars is looking for okay now to- see we're running behind now we got here two hours before we went on the air this time now For the regular listeners and and participants in this show that listen on various and sundry outlets, uh, the show started an hour ago. But those were recorded. Seven of them. Those were recorded. uh, (laughs) Those were recorded hours. Okay. Okay. This is now live and in living color Mm -hmm. from the Hemi Hideout. And everything has a pink hue in the living color. It does. What happened to our light up there? Because all the neon power. Yeah. Huh? We needed the power. Oh, you needed the power, so out went the light? Yep. Oh. Well, isn't that something? It's special. Mm -hmm. I've got to say that every one of you looks great on the radio. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We do that. And now it's your turn. (laughs) So Bill Sites has uh, uh, a lot of hours involved in in this uh, Hemi hideout. From the ground up, actually. Did you watch the concrete being poured? Were you oh, here for that? Oh, I was here for everything. Everything. We started putting little flags in the field where we were going to build the building, and then it went from there. So, yeah. yeah. From the very beginning. How did you meet John Hovis? Or do I even ask? Sure. I do automotive artwork. Yes. And I illustrated one of his cars that was in a local shop, and whenever they do a big build, they have me do an illustration. They give it to the owner when he picks the car up. And for a while... He wondered who did the artwork, and I wondered who owned the car, and finally our paths crossed about 15 years ago, and been buddies ever since. You know, John is a likable guy, and feel like family once you meet him once. Yeah. uh, And it grew from there. It was a very fortunate meeting. I've uh, enjoyed every minute of it, got to say. Yeah. Well, and it was you that called me, uh, as I think that the building was being built, and you said, Don? When this thing is built, you've got to come out here and meet John. Yep. And I finally got the invitation to come out here, and I was wowed, (laughs) needless to say. But, um, and and 
thanks to you, our friendship with him has, has grown as well. Yeah. And this was actually before you even had, I think, the In Wheel Time Show, wasn't it? I, I believe it was. it was. Well, 15 years ago, because this show's now in its 12th year. Okay. So I think it was about a little bit before that time. But well, and the, and the wow factor is kind of beyond the cars and the collection of neon. To me, the wow factor is the structure. The building itself is just impressive to stand in the middle of and look at. It's just pretty cool. I thought you were going to say the people involved in it. And the artwork the wow surrounding factor. the place. Well, the, wow, now, yeah, the, and now the he's, family of people that surround the and place. And now right he's now. trying to dance around what he said. <laughs> it's okay. No, thank you. Uh-huh. I know you are. I know Bill's done all the artwork out here. A lot of it. A few pieces. Not. Including the, the center the centerpiece as you walk the, in? The tiles and the logo design and the big murals and some of the smaller paintings. So, yeah, that's been fun. Yeah. So, when did, was that up when they opened the building, your artwork? Yes. On all the walls? Yes. So, while the building was being built or before the building was being built, you were working on the artwork? was working on the designs for it. John wanted everything, all of us did, wanted everything unique in here, not something that you're going to go down to another collection somewhere and see the same thing. So that was our challenge, and it took a while to come up with the ideas, and then the actual artwork didn't take as long. So so what what did did you go through his car collection? Because the car coll collection is already was already in place for the most part. Then. He had all the cars. Uh, yeah. So we knew we wanted to include the cars in uh in the murals and in the tiles, the, 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 that artwork. So we knew the content-wise. He just wanted to know how to present it. Yeah. So that's uh, that was yeah. a challenge. I told John, I said, I wanted to do the artwork, but I didn't, didn't know I was going to have to help him build a building before I could put the <laughs> put artwork, the artwork. In it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> had to make sure he had the wall space for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. At the time, the first time I came out here, there may have been, I don't know, a dozen or so neon signs at the most. <laughs> Am I right? More than that, but it looked... It, well, this is how, how many square feet is this? 22,000. 22,000 square feet. So, all right, let's just say two dozen signs. Let's say 280 signs. When Originally? We up, when we opened up, yeah. Really? Yeah. I would have never known. John? The building swallows them up. It, it truly does. And every time we come up here which is a, a little less than once a year. It's like, wait a minute, that's new. What's the new one, yeah. And, and you picked out one outside. Yep. The, the Valentine's beer signs. First time I noticed it. And the only reason I noticed it, my grandfather drank Valentine beer, and I'm sure the reason he drank it is because he knew I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so bad? Yeah, it, it's the beer that created bitter beer face. <laughs> oh, gosh, that stuff is horrible. It's, yeah. a, it's like a New York City beer. It's just horrible. Then people drink it, apparently. My grandfather did. Oh. And they had nice signs. And they had nice signs. They, they were all over the place. Yeah. I won't tell you how long that sign's been out there, but oh, well. ask, ask John. <laughs> Does first, it? The first Has it been out there a long it. time? Yeah. Well, I still go up to some of the signs. I said, John, when did you get this? And he said, uh, 2012. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good, so we're not by ourselves then. I, it, I've lost. I can't keep up with the new signs. Yeah. Though. Well, the cool thing about the building is there's so many nooks and crannies and a place to place a sign. It's, you, you really can't look anywhere in here without seeing 15 or 20 various neon signs of different brands and stuff. And most of it automotive, not necessarily every bit of it automotive, but all of it's gorgeous. John's expanded his interests past automobiles and Petroliana to just Americana in general. Yeah, and it's go, and you can look at a sign, and 20 minutes later, come back, and you'll see 10 other things you didn't see the first time. So yeah. it's, it draws you in. Well, I will say this: that I see that they keep getting higher in the rafters now. Oh, he'll go right to the top. I know he will. Eventually, he will. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's still all that space up there that isn't filled in yet. Exactly, and I'm sure that uh, we're working on that, no doubt. Yeah, daily, daily. Do you go out with him when he's collecting? Not anymore. Went on, a, did, went on some memorable trips, believe me. Uh, but haven't done that in a while. In fact, we're all cutting back a little bit. John and Tom and myself and a few others. It's kind of like, you know, rumor has it we're getting older. No. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm here. not. Well, you're an exception. Believe, believe me. In many yeah, ways. In a lot of ways, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Um, Jeff, you could ask John if, if we could get us another uh, – 
uh, electric cord to light up the light because uh, I can tell you that the video is going to be extremely pink. Well, trust me on this. I can tell you that well, on the playback, it won't be good. But at any rate, um, sorry for the background stuff, but you'll notice that we don't have the big in-wheel time sign back here. I was going to ask you about that. It's in front now. Because we didn't, we're not trying to cover up anything, sure and we were. There we're covering go. up the motorcycle collection. Yeah. It's any place you put a barrier in here, it's going to be exactly hide something. Hide something worth looking at. Yeah, good point. Yeah, and uh, we've actually thought about doing some broadcasts where we actually have our back to the live audience, that's but cool. we're shooting them. That's know. cool. Kind of like they do on the network stuff every once in a while, mainly football games. Just saying. Yeah, especially like when we're at a car show or a, an event, and that way we can kind of see the cars cruising around as opposed to switching to a different camera that we can't get to work on Jeff's laptop. Oops. <laughs> Mars. Mars, you're, you're, you're very quiet over there. What are you doing? I, I'm, I'm monitoring everything. He's working on are his you? phone. And you found that we're not on the air? Is that what it no, is? We're no, we're here. We're, we're there. We're we're up. Okay. Well, just checking. I did want to uh, – have you been keeping up with the UAW strike out of Detroit at all? Not much. Well, okay. Well, we're a car show, so we try to keep up with it on a weekly basis. Stellantis is pulling out of the Specialty Equipment Market Association show. That's in Las Vegas. And the Los Angeles Auto Show to cut costs during the ongoing UAW strike. Automaker Friday yesterday said it is canceling its displays and presentations at the two events as part of its strike contingency plan. It announced the moves just days after saying it was canceling plans to participate in the 2024 CES Tech Expo in January. The SEMA event begins October 31st in Las Vegas, and the L.A. show starts November 16th. That's huge because... That's a late pullout for SEMA. It is, and the other thing that concerns me, Mr. Mars, is the fact, uh, are they going to have the Jeep and Ram display at the Houston Auto Show? And I'm hoping that we'll be able to get a hold of uh, somebody from uh, the Houston Auto Show to... We will. We need, we need to talk to them She's next week. She's out of week. town we need right to talk, now. We need to talk to them next week. Um, well, it's not just her, you know. There's, yeah, uh, no, but she knows a lot of stuff about it. But I, I don't know that... Houston and is not, and a lot of the other shows are not like SEMA and the LA Auto Show from an expense perspective. I understand. I mean, they have monstrous displays and stuff at those, and they're very expensive, especially the SEMA show. Well, the, the Jeep ride and drive is a pretty monstrous it display. Is, it yeah. is. That that would be the thing. It would probably be the first thing. But isn't have. the Houston Auto Show is, is Houston dealer funded, though? No. Well, yes. Partially. The, partially. Yeah. Uh, some of the manufacturers help cushion the blow but um you know but that's there been were less and less there lately. were a lot of am i hearing am i hearing us somewhere is that your phone it's not mine so, it's somebody's phone over there that needs to have the volume turned down thank go. you um professionalism no my earplugs i forgot to put my earplugs in to hear it i see for the monitor well thank you it's okay but i'll do that now okay um, no, we were talking about the Houston Auto Show. Um, but waiting there were, till the there second. are a lot more uh, manufacturers that aren't showing up. For instance, last year, Cadillac. The only reason that there were a few Cadillac cars there were because the dealers themselves Wanted contributed to, to that. And um, so to me, that's huge. I don't know how you can have a car show and not have Cadillac back your presentation at a car show. you got to have to rely on the dealers. What? Especially when they're trying to launch the Lyric. Yeah. You know, that's their, that's their big new launch is the Lyric. And uh, I don't know what the inventory looks like at local dealers. I can't imagine it's very much, but that's going to be such an important yeah. car for the Cadillac brand. You, uh, have you checked? Are you into the car stuff at all anymore? What are you doing? What, what good are you? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Why are you here? What most seniors do, we kind of hang around. <laughs> Are you playing cribbage uh, down at the, uh, at the at the country club? Uh, strictly shuffleboard and pickleball. Oh, great! No, I'm, I'm I'm kidding now. Don't get me on that. <laughs> I'm just because you to know keep... all of your fans out there uh, <laughs> that where you live. Both of them. Both of them. Uh huh. They're gonna go. He just called us out. <laughs> well, we'll show him. 
It's the whole see, pickleball club. You see, I, I can tease Bill because, well, Bill needs teasing for one, but it, it's always been our relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Giving a hard time. Starting, I was starting to offend me now, though, so well, you need to back off. Uh, okay, up. I'm going to back off. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and with that. that, I think I'm gonna. Okay. Yes, please, please go right ahead. You're good to go. But we love you. Thank you, um, Conrad. Do you happen to have the events calendar nearby? Sure. Because it's time for that. Well, um, today is the. Uh, excuse me. Um, oh Lord. Did you read this? 30, yeah, 38th annual uh, Wolf Creek car sh- car and truck show going on in Cold Spring. It's uh, started yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, uh, November 4th is the 4th Annual Memorial Benefit Taps and Turbo Car Show at the No Label Brewing Company in Katy. Uh, also today is the two clubs coming together for two good causes. H-Town Camaro Club is, uh, and the Northside Mustang Club are meeting at the Anheuser-Busch Brewery. I still haven't figured out why there's so much automotive stuff at alcohol-related places. So is, is that the brewery that's uh, in Houston? Yeah, I, I, because I, I, and, uh, they actually have a two of Kenny Bernstein's top fuel cars in the building. Oh, cool! Yeah, I they're didn't know in that. the in the area where like shipping and receiving, they're all roped off. There's a lot of Kenny Bernstein Budweiser memorabilia in that in that facility. Had, how do you get to see it? Uh, you can go in. Uh, you can go in and ask, and they'll show it to you. Yeah. Oh. So the H Town Camaro Club is uh, doing a fundraiser for Fallen Heroes. Through the 100 Club and the Northside Mustang Club is doing their donations are going to Honor Flight Houston, who fly veterans back to uh, the war memorials in Washington, D.C. Um, and then uh, Northside Mustang Club is having their uh, fall open car show November 4th uh, at Bull Salas Park in New Caney, Texas. Uh, next weekend is the Oct Turbo Fest up in Waco, Texas. And then uh, Memorial, or excuse me, um, Veterans Weekend is the 17th annual Heroes and Hot Rods Veterans Day show in downtown Bastrop. And you can visit uh, BastropAreaCruisers.com to learn more about that. Thank you, sir. And time now for this hour's car review. Mr. Mars reviews the Kia Kona. Just not going to leave that one alone. (laughs) Going to leave that one alone. (laughs) (laughs) Ever. The Ever. Mercedes-Benz GLS 450. What is it? Is it a car? Is it an SUV? This is an SUV. They kind of quit calling things CVs. Apparently, that's not a good word no, anymore. No, it's not any good. Everything's gone back to being an SUV. It's the GLS 450. It comes in three trim levels. The 450 is uh, the base trim level for the GLS series of SUVs. And then there's the GLS 580, and then there's the AMG GS GLS 63. Now, this is the 4Matic, so it is the all-wheel drive. Uh, and again, I said it's the base of the full-size luxury SUV. Now, it's a six-passenger vehicle because it's two, two, and two. It's two uh, captain chairs in the second row, and then the third row has seating for three. It comes with several different packages on it, uh, like the AMG line package. So you've got a lot of AMG body styling cues on the trim on the outside of it, the 21-inch AMG wheels. It also had the night package where you've got a lot of things blacked out like the grill, the side mirrors, the roof rails. But uh, it also has the LED lighting package, which is pretty much standard these days. We had the panoramic sunroof. We had the power lift gate. And, again, I mentioned the 21-inch AMG five-spoke wheels on it that look really nice. Now, you get into the inside of it. You've got black leather seating. had some brushed aluminum trim all throughout it. Now, the front seats are heated and massaging. And I used the it. front seats. Front seats, both front seats. So you are can, heated you can be going down the freeway at 100 miles an hour and have your speed armor says 160. It does. Yes. I don't want to be in it at 100. Now the second row, seats. The second row, so to speak, has captain's chairs as well, and uh, they are also heated. And the third row is a power folding 50/50 arrangement that works pretty good. Has lots of nice, one of the better ambient lightings is the only reason I pointed out in, on the interior of it. It was fun to play with. 12.3 inch monitor. And that's where you're going to find all your convenience controls, your navigation, your surround sa- your surround view camera, whenever you're using that. And it had the 590-watt Burmeister surround sound audio with all 13 right. speakers it in it. It didn't have the Armstrong uh, system in it. No, it did not. It's a string in a can. Now, I will say that this one had, it seemed like it had a button for everything and knobs and everything. It wasn't so much on the touch screen. A lot of it was dual on the touch screen, but 
Some of them were small. Some of it I couldn't read, and I had to just – I played with it, and I finally figured out what would do what. So It's been your problem for many years. Many, many, many years. Trial and error got me through that. And it has USB-C ports through the whole thing. No USB-A. So if you're normal USB, like you plug in your computer or something – it wouldn't work. It won't work. you got to have the C or you got to have an adapter to get to a C port, front and rear. I thought, you know, you're going to change sooner or later, but they're kind of rushing it. And Mars always has a pocket full of adapters. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now, up under the hood, we had the 3.0 liter turbo that's considered a mild hybrid. And so it does out 375 horsepower this year, which is up from 362. 369 pound and feet of torque with a nine speed transmission. Now, you properly equip this vehicle and it'll pull 7,700 pounds. Whoa. And, and I thought that was a pretty hefty chunk, but this is a big, heavy car. The EPA says you should be looking for 19 miles to the gallon in the city, 24 on the highway, combined 21. Now, I drove this thing 356.8 miles, and I got 19.5 miles to the gallon, and I was pretty happy with that. It's lots of power, lots of smooth power that you really didn't notice too much. Now, it does come with the uh, standard air suspension. And it does have the acoustic comfort package. So it's got increased insulation. The windshield is all insulated glass, the side glass. So it's pretty quiet on the inside with all the extra insulation. And it rides really smooth with the, ins- with the air suspension. Now, this is the base model. So you're going to start out at $87,000 for this vehicle. The as-tested price after we added all these trim packages was 95720 Oh, boy. Base trim level. You kind of styling it last yeah, week. Yeah, it was. I was good. It's a nice uh, compared but you didn't you didn't take Becky in it and you didn't bring her over oh, here in it. Yes. No, I didn't bring her. We don't have it now. It's it's gone. We had to bring the truck. I see. So if you're looking for something to compare it to, you might look at the Infinity QX80 that starts at 74150 for the base trim level. The Cadillac Escalade sets up at 81895 whenever you start getting into the base. Even the Lincoln Navigator is up at 87655 and there's several more out there and the price goes up as you get into them. So that is the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLS 450 4 Woohoo! Nice. It was. It was very nice. A lot if of fun if you're looking for a $100,000 SUV. Well, I, I like it. I like the, the styling and, and the view of the, the rear portion of it, the hatch area with the wide tires underneath there. It's, it looks good. It has very, like well, it. that's a lot of the AMG styling right. that comes with that package. Very and nice. it really, to me, it, without going up to the AMG vehicle itself, you really get a, you get a lot of the looks. Yes, the that's really what motor. it amounts to. Mm-hmm. It. And uh, it looks really good. I'm looking for a story. Well, just I th- think that this would be the appropriate place to put that story. I think you should. And uh, it's a Mercedes-Benz story. And I haven't found it yet, but I have lots of stories. Is that is this about the uh, let me tell UAW you st- striking the no, AMG no, or no, the no, Mercedes Let me tell you a story plane. about That's finding the very, paperwork. It's the very last story. Of course it is. Mercedes-Benz aspirations to become a global electric vehicle brand show early signs of stalling in the automaker's largest EV market as retailers struggle to dent their swelling inventories. The brand reported its U.S. EV sales surged more than fourfold in the first nine months of the year, largely because of the higher volume EQE crossover and sedan. Now that effort is flailing. Uh, Edmonds data shows Mercedes-Benz dealers in September took an average of 82 days to sell the brand's battery-powered EQ models, more than double BMW's 38-day turn rate and significantly above the luxury segment average of 57 days. Mercedes is not alone in its predicament with EVs. Inventories are surging industry-wide as automakers introduce new models, ramp up production to meet stricter federal emission mandates for the years ahead. So, looks like uh, EV sales so are, the, have taken a little turn for the worse. The buying public's not interested, so days no. supply grows, and when days supply grows, incentives grow. This program is available 24-7 on iHeartRadio. Just search In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InWheelTime.com. And 30-minute podcasts are at your fingertips on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will continue right after a quick break. 
The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station. Located just around the corner from Kyle Field, it's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana, stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. Houston's finest cars are invited to another Gulf Coast Auto Shield car social, Saturday, December 2nd, and you're invited too. Show off your personal pride and joy, or just stop in to see the likes of Lucid, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari, and more. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your one-stop shop for paint detailing, coatings, window tent, clear bras, and wheel repair. The Car Social is your opportunity to get a tour of this state-of-the-art facility, located at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. It all takes place Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon. This is the perfect opportunity to connect with other car enthusiasts. From BMWs to Bentleys, Corvettes to McLarens, the Car Social is a different kind of show. Talk to the owners. See Gulf Coast Auto Shield's facility. You'll be amazed. Put it on your calendar now. The Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social, Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. The In Will Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. We'll see you then. Rogers Dabbs Chevrolet and GM Performance have the absolute best price that you will find on GM Parts Plus, transmissions and engines. Over $25 million in parts and powertrain inventory and customer service that will be not matched by anyone in the country. Rogers Dabbs Chevrolet and GM Performance, whether you are a drag racer, an oval track racer, a hot rodder, it matters not. Rogers Dabbs Chevrolet and GM Performance will have the best price in the country, the best customer service, and the best delivery times that you will find on your GM parts. It can be on your dock, at your front door, in a matter of days. It's Rogers Dab Chevrolet GM Performance and customer service to boot. Contact our Texas team, Gina Shile Knowles at 713-907-0906 or Rodney Rodriguez at 512-300-4445. You will not find better service or better inventory in the country. Rogers Dabs and GM Performance. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher.